point out uh, just a couple points of order that I, I failed to mention at the beginning. Um, we do have a chat function here in Zoom, so if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to type those into the chat here. Um, there's also a hand raising tool that you can use to try to catch our attention. Um, and Philip and Kim are, are sort of MC in the chat area right now. Um, and, and we'll try to make your questions known if they come up. So, you know how these Zoom things go. Like I'm looking at three screens right now. So, Philip and Kim are going to help be our eyes and ears. Um, any other sort of process questions before we, we keep going here? So to get a little more into the town center plan background, um, also we'll put this whole slideshow online as well. Um, so you'll have access to this information after the fact. Um, one thing we do wanna to talk to you about is sort of confirming the town center's vision for streets. And, and just looking at this first sentence about them being a vibrant walkable destination uh, that inspires people to come together and socialize, shop, live, and work. Um, you know, ben, I think that gets at kind of your comment of how do you make streets usable year-round for folks. Um, so that's definitely a consideration we're keeping in mind. So we won't dwell on, on this particular slide necessarily, um, but just wanted to remind you all of, of the vision from that town center plan last year um, and, and make sure that you feel like these intentions are being recognized throughout the course of the project, not just today, but when we come back in 2021 and, and look at some of the more detailed design ideas. When we get into the streetscape design, um, there are six high level goals from the town center project, such as environmental stewardship and mixed uses. Uh, we've put these stars next to some of the measures of success that we think are most relevant to the streetscape design. So some of these are, are pretty obvious, like identify appropriate landscaping that provides visual interest. That's definitely a part of a streetscape design. Organize and manage parking down here in the bottom right. Um, balancing all those different users and considerations. So we won't go through all of these, but just know that this is you know, one of the lenses we're using. Um, as we, we think about the designs and the specific streets that they'll apply to, to make sure we're really on the right track. This is just a, a continuation of that with goals four through six. So to help think about the translation of the town center to the street network, again, here's that map from the town center plan showing different street hierarchies like the local, uh, the main street in purple, um, minor arterials on Parkway and Canyon Creek, you know, connecting in and out of the town center. So that's sort of indicative of the way streets serve different functions and sort of have different scales throughout the town center. Some will have higher traffic, some will have low. You'll even see options that say maybe no vehicles whatsoever on some of these streets. So we're really dealing with that whole range of street uses. The purpose of the streetscape plan is you know, to prepare a unified design concept uh, that is then tailored to all these different street types. So we're kind of starting at the high level, the thematic level, and Colin's gonna show you some of that later on, getting some buy-in and support for that, and then applying it to different locations in the streets. Am I interpreting the, the, the streets correctly? There's gonna be four streets that are crossing Wilsonville Road? Um, There'll be four sections with here. Street, street lights that will be in traffic. Ben, can, I don't know if you can see me or hear me well. Yeah, we've got you, Kim. Do both. Yeah, okay. So um, just to provide a little more context, uh, there, there are, this is a long-term future street network that is planned. And so uh, what you're seeing on here are the existing intersections of both um, Town Center Loop East and West. Um, one of the key elements of the Town Center plan is the construction of a new Main Street. And so that is that kind of purple dashed line you see. Um, that, that lines up um, 
And there's a drive aisle in that area right now, but it's just to the west of the Wendy's. And so over the long term, um, that would be envisioned to become a more formalized uh, roadway within the town center. Um, and so that is one of the key uh, street elements in the town center plan. Um, so it's, it's really just kind of reconfiguring how those intersections would work along Wilsonville Road. So would the others then go away or would we literally stop like every 250 feet at a traffic light? Um, so there are different configurations. There would be a new signal added there, but some of the other, um, other uh, intersection patterns would change once these connections are um, made. And I'm happy to speak with you offline in the interim sure. about this because there's a lot of detail to that. Um, and I really don't want to take away from uh, Ben here. Um, but I, I can uh, connect with you later if you want to reach out to me on that. Absolutely. I'll, I'm also doing the uh, Wilsonville Citizens Academy, so I'll okay. be able to with you through that as well. Great. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Good question. Um, continuing on here, um, just quickly to show, you know, again, how the town center uh, is a key node in an expanding multimodal network around Wilsonville. Uh, you're probably familiar with the I-5 pedestrian and, and bicycling bridge project that's underway. That's one key linkage of it that we're tying into. But really a number of these streets um, and even no vehicle pathways and promenades in the town center will become integral to the town center being a, a hub for walking and biking uh, throughout the entire city. To quickly, you know, go through a couple of these, there are 11 or 12 different cross sections the town center plan put together. We'll show just a few um, as, as kind of just a reminder of the inspiration we're dealing with. So Park Place right at Town Center Park. This is that option for a festival street that could be closed down, you know, parts of the year for farmers markets and other festivals and really prioritizes shared traffic. You know, further down, this is that road extension you just mentioned, uh, Ben, uh, of Park Place going through, you know, where existing buildings and parking lots right now. But bringing in, you know, a, a more recognizable 60-foot road with wide sidewalks, landscaping, parking, stormwater, and vehicle lanes in both directions. So a nice kind of human-scale street. Local streets, there's a bevy of those proposed throughout the town center. This is just one potential configuration for it. Um, and this one brings in buffered bike lanes, for example. So pointing back to uh, how these streets in the town center become part of the walking and biking network for the whole city. The promenade, which I've hinted at, um, no motor vehicles whatsoever. You know, a very nice wide cycle track a really spacious stormwater facility that serves infrastructure needs, but is also, uh, you know, attractive, uh, uh, provides habitat, you know, and, and really makes a very different kind of use of this space between buildings uh, that you're seeing in the town center today. And another form of that bicycle and pedestrian connection. So where you see this on the map, this is also uh, a key link up to the I-5 bridge and tying the whole town center together and then even across I-5. So we have a, a pretty exciting range of, of different street types and hierarchies that we're working with here. Uh, so we wanna make sure we get this sort of design theme uh, figured out in a really sensitive way. There's other influential plans that have happened. We've uh, already mentioned the town center plan. Uh, the I-5 bridge design is underway uh, the wayfinding and signage plan is recently adopted. And then there's a few others here that we won't go through, um, like the bicycle connectivity plan and the urban forestry plan uh, that are recent or underway right now. And we'll definitely be synchronizing with those. Um, something like the urban forestry plan obviously is very relevant to the way that we pick out landscaping, stormwater, street trees, uh, and other amenities like that you know, throughout the streetscape and in some of the plazas and open spaces in the town center. So quickly on I-5, um, sort of near the northwest corner of the town center, um, you're you know, potentially aware that the city's in the, the midst of designing this project right now uh, to create a really important connection 
over I-5 uh, to the western part of Wilsonville. Just in the last few weeks, uh, the city has made a recommendation for the tide arch bridge concept that you'll see there on the left. And this landing plaza, so the east side of the bridge, which is in the town center, um, going towards some kind of blend of drops and riffles and river oxbow. And I bring this up not because we're re-adjudicating the I-5 bridge project right now or not, but we do want to make sure our streetscapes you know, tie into this space in, in a really uh, coherent way. And to point out, the design process of I-5 uh, is taking sort of a similar approach to what we're doing with the streetscapes. Um, you can see sort of recognizable shapes and forms and, and sort of get a sense of the experience of this plaza when you look at these images, but we don't know the details of the material or every single plant right now. We don't know every bench. We don't know every street light. The I-5 bridge project doesn't know that right now. It will soon. And the streetscape project will eventually get to that point too. So it's just a way of kind of thinking about uh, the high order of design coming down to the details later on. In the I-5 bridge concept, you know, we're working with uh, or acknowledging some of these uh, top-ranking plaza components, so art and sustainability features. These will definitely be things that we keep in mind through the streetscape too, because you know, this list was derived from hundreds and hundreds of survey results and community conversations um, and probably a lot of meetings and events that maybe you all attended recently. One other quick bit to point out is, um, you know, the wayfinding and signage plan that I mentioned. This is recently adopted. Um, and I point this out, you know, of course, wayfinding and signage is important citywide and, and will be in the town center. We'll make sure to incorporate these findings into the work that we do. Uh, and also to sort of point out to you, um, lend a few more people in the waiting room here, all right. Um, some of the materials being used, you know, stone, metal, uh, sort of natural design features. That's going to come up again later in our conversation here. Actually, it's going to come up right now. Um, <laughs> so given some of that background and, and what we pointed out to you about the town center plan, I want to ask this question about um, the town center plan feedback for the previous couple years and in the adopted plan, you know, favored the use of modern natural design aesthetic and supports the use of wood, stone, glass, and brick. And so to you all, uh, I want to ask you, do you support the use of some of those primary materials in the streetscape? And do you have, you know, any broader thoughts at this point about the recommendation for the natural design aesthetic that we're trying to execute. Feel free to speak up or put comments in the chat here. I'm also looking for hand raising. Ben, that's a literal hand raise. All right. I didn't want to dominate the conversation every <laughs> I don't and on every topic, but um, yeah, I think we all appreciate natural stone and natural design. Uh, Wilsonville does have, you know, a bit of a history with art, so we'd like to incorporate uh, whether it be metalwork. Uh, one of my childhood friends is Jesse Swickard. You know, he did some of the uh, artwork installations um, in other parts of the town. But again, it, I think it would be better to keep it, you know, within a, a reasonable budget. Nobody wants to see their tax dollars spent on, on things that are, you know, not necessarily required. Sure, definitely. Like we don't need pink marble from Angel, you know, Mount Angel or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too exotic and bespoke. So. All right, uh, comment from Susan. 
you know, supporting the use of natural materials that coordinate with the I-5 bridge project. So, you know, definitely, definitely keeping that under advisement. Um, and, and we're going to make sure our projects are linked together even more in the coming half year. So, um, any other thoughts? Otherwise, we can keep moving on and and definitely come back to this topic in the, the next 30 minutes if any fresh comments come to mind. Yeah, this is Catalina. I was just wondering if, or just wanted to make a comment that perhaps there might be a way to reuse some of the resources in other areas of Wilsonville that like say that there's some trees that need to be cut down. I wonder if there's a way that we can incorporate that wood into some artistic cultural pieces perhaps, or just trying to find a way to reuse more materials um, rather than just using new ones. So that's my comment. It's a great idea, definitely. Colin, let's uh, look up our California examples of that recently. All right. Uh, comment here from Zachary um, pointing out yeah regional materials local materials year-round accessibility uh, and safety and comfort in the wet and rainy seasons so definitely <laughs> no high slip materials no banana peels all right all right well, we'll keep marching here. Um, we get a little bit more into the design conversation in our next 30 minutes here. And um, about to get ready to hand it off to Colin. Um, we just wanted to show a little bit of existing conditions and, and think about some of the design inspiration we're taking from the town center as it exists today. Um, there's opportunities there uh, and there's areas for improvement. And we, we kind of want to use that as a lens for this conversation. And to point out, uh, as I've hinted, you know, some of these streets will be entirely new construction, you know, starting from scratch, practically. It, it might be um, a, a vacant site or a parking lot right now, and um, there's all that opportunity to build fresh. In other areas, it's a significant redesign, and in some situations, it might just be a minor refresh. So kind of keep, just keep that in your head, as we will be, uh, as, as we continue to design for the next six to eight months or so, uh, having that kind of flexibility to scale. So I'm going to hand it off to Colin, and he's going to wink at me every time I'm supposed to advance a slide. <laughs> uh, Colin is, uh, has been working at Sarah for a couple years now. He's a landscape architect by training, um, and is really helping lead uh, the design conversation for this entire project. So take it away, Colin. Thanks, Ben. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a series of photos that uh, we took on our visit to the town center, uh, walking the streets. Um, it was certainly eye opening for me. And I guess just as a sort of disclaimer, these are photos that we took. These were experiences that we had. But uh, as we go through the conversation today, we're definitely interested in talking about your experiences in town center as um, you know, community members who live there um, and experience it every day. So with that being said, um, this uh, the first image was of Park Place, or is of Park Place, and it feels at the moment a little disjointed. There's a uh, you're looking at a cul-de-sac there, or a, what used to be um, in the middle of the street. So we would look to try to shore that up, make things a little more consistent, um, especially for pedestrians as they're walking through the space, but also vehicles. You know, moving vehicles efficiently through space makes things safer for pedestrians um, and bikers. Go ahead, next one. So um, courtside was um, actually pretty interesting for me because it, it seemed to have full facilities and a uh, good trans. crossings for pedestrians, but also enhancing and keeping um, those transit facilities, how those transit facilities look along 
the right of way um, and where they're located, that's you know still to be determined. But I think the street shows a, a good example of, um, of facilities available to both pedestrians and um, vehicle commutes. And this is looking north, I believe, along um, Town Center Loop East. And this is, a, I guess, a, a more full, wider build out of what a, um, tr a vehicle facility, as well as a fuller bike facility, not just a bike lane. Now we're talking about a buffered bike, bike lane. Um, and again, sidewalks with uh, a good uh, array of street trees along each side. Um, I could think mostly on the west side there. Um, with again, crossings, signalized crossings across. I think one quick thing to point out here is, you know, the street functions one way today, but we need to wrap our heads around how the street needs to function in the future if these vacant sites or parking lots that surround it right now become apartment buildings or community uses or businesses uh, um, and how the evolution of the street needs to sort of meet that halfway. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of transformations and what's to come, uh, the aforementioned Wilsonville Road um, is, you have, you have the library, I believe, on the left, and then the town center, main part of town center on the right, uh, image right. And this is another great example of this is what it looks like now, but what is this going to look like in the future um, with, you know, this, it's this arrival at, at a new town square. We won't be able I think what this image represents is what, and in terms of what we'll be looking for is how do we blend those two, right? This kind of represents an edge at the moment, um, more of a separator. How do we blur those edges and um, create safe crossings and uh, through traffic? We're getting our timing down, all right. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, Town Center Loop West, uh, you've got I-5, you can see through there, um, through the trees there in the background. Um, I remember walking up to this and it seemed very um, abrupt. It was kind of like a whoa moment. Like um, you kind of, you're walking through the town center and through some parking lots and then all of a sudden there's a right of way in front of you and there's cars passing you. Um, so this is another great opportunity um, and another great example of right now, those cars are, are moving through easy that's great. However, you have a five foot wide crosswalk that maybe as you're walking along this roadway, um, you know, maybe we'd be looking to look at traffic calming devices. Um, I think one of those in general is building and more people on the streets. If you get more people on the streets, you're going to slow down. You're going to want to, uh, you know, not window shot from your car, but see what's going on in the street. And, and, and I think as you uh, look at the town center plan and, and the development ideas for this area, um, I think that certainly is a part of this future. And this was Park Place at Courtside. Um, as the title mentions, it'd be a major change area. This seems like to be the, the kind of the center of town. You've got um, the Apache t statue there. Um, and it, right now it kind of functions as an odd intersection that there's a lot going on, but you don't really feel like it's the heart of, of, um, of the town center, which as we've heard, it, it mainly functions as you're right at the corner of, the, um, of a, the major park. You have a lot of businesses, newer businesses as well on corners, but I think we would look to um, create this as more of a festival atmosphere, easier crossings for pedestrians and, and safer crossings at that. But more of a, in general, a sense of arrival um, looking at landmarks and right. So in the park, um, Ben had mentioned weather and our Oregon weather that we love and looking at along these streets, you have, yes, you're moving people and you're moving cars, but you're also looking to stop and, and sit and gather. And this is a good example of um, some materials that we saw were a common theme of metal and glass, um, kind of a modern aesthetic, but not, um, not super modern, um, still functional. And we would be looking to apply these along uh, also, uh, you know, other places in town center, um, not just in the park. 
yeah, to be to be clear, I uh, hope it didn't frighten anyone. We're not punching a new street through the park. This is all about materials inspiration um, and, and drawing upon you know, quality design that already exists in the town center. So. <laughs> yes. Sorry if we startled anyone there. Um, right, again, continuing with those materials uh, in the same town center park, uh, looking at the Oregon Korean War Memorial, that use of stone again, brick coming in. Um, I think we, you know, this idea of uh, culture and, and heritage and, and respect, that was kind of a theme that we saw and we would look to as we, later in this conversation, we'll talk about themes that we've been starting to develop for this. And I think this will start to, uh, we, we carry that theme over into streetscape things. Um, some examples of uh, shelters and uh, bus shelters and bus stops. Um, the left image is along, along Park Place. The right image is again, uh, is Town Center Lou? Sounds like Courtside. Courtside. Um, again, a modern aesthetic, metals, dark colors. Um, this is an example of a stormwater facility. Um, I think what I like about it is it's, you're starting to talk about how public space interacts with private space um, in terms of actual land ownership. Um, but I think this blends that kind of, the, I think it blends those two well. And we start looking at facilities like this um, along streetscapes. I think this was a good example of a newer, newer project. And there it is, um, the Apache statue talking about um, landmarks and these, um, as you navigate through town center, um, where are these nodes, these hubs that are kind of highlighted by um, landmarks? How do I know I've arrived in a place? And I think this was a good example of um, something that um, the community knows well and enjoys and we look to uh, build upon that. Uh, more materials, uh, brick, this is City Hall. Um, and it, it, it follows that distinct brick and, and kind of modern aesthetic, but um, maybe something that it lacks that, that we could do better in, in newer buildings and, and in relationships with the street is put those uh, main entrances on the street, right? Engaging, making active street frontages. And in terms of lighting right now, there's kind of a mix, but it's all pretty much that modern, it all has a modern kind of aesthetic to it. There's nothing super flashy um, and, uh, but it's all very functional. Uh, keeping with that functional theme and modern theme, looking at current furnishings. Um, most of these are in Town Center Park. Um, again, metals, woods. I believe that bench is some sort of synthetic wood or Tyvek. Um, and yeah, something we, I, first time I got to see it was Memorial Park when we walked this in. Um, I think we noticed that while it is across the street from town center, technically, it certainly feels a part of it. And we would look to use that community asset and, and connect to that community asset um, as we look at the streetscape designs. Another image of Town Center Park um, with, you know, it's, it, is, it certainly functions in ours as a, as a landmark. Um, be interested to hear your opinions, but um, yeah, it's certainly noticeable. Uh, the idea of play is certainly um, something that we have um, in, in Wilsonville. This is an example of a water play in the summer. Um, maybe as we talk about defining spaces, we look at, okay, this functions as a water space and, and play space in the summer. What is it in the winter? Can it serve other functions? Can um, seating, uh, audit, auditorium or um, amphitheater style seating, you know, start looking at multiple functions for things. And I will let Ben take over this one. This question speaks for itself, I suppose. But um, uh, speaking of being interested in your opinions, uh, now, a question to you all is, are there designs and key features in the town center today that you like and, and want to build upon for the streetscape? Uh, we think there's a, a lot of opportunity there um, and some nice little gems within the town center uh, that we can work with and, 
and just want to ask you all what you value about the town center today that we should honor as we move forward. I'm going to scroll through everyone looking for raised hands. This is Catalina again. Um, off of the um, at oops, um, at Center Park, there's um, where that hub is or that intersection is. There's the Rotary Club. They have that rose bush um, where it's just a bunch of roses. I really, really like that because I think it. I'm pretty sure that it. Um, is dedicated to citizens and their service every year. I'm not entirely clear on that, but I just love just seeing um, the natural roses just being there in a big group. I just think that it would be awesome to see more little plots of natural flowers um, throughout the city. Yeah, that's good. I think maybe we didn't notice that. We'll have to take another look um, for the Rotary Club roses. Any other thoughts on, on what folks like in the town center today? Ben? Uh, yeah, like Catalina mentioned, that uh, Rose area is, um, I think, maintained by the Rotary Club. I, I, I think they funded it. Uh, the Korean War Memorial that you also had in your picture, there was a lot of private funds raised uh, to make that happen. So it wasn't all city spending. Um, but I mean, even the benches with the composite material, you can use that year round, it's wonderful. And thank you for pointing out the covered area, the picnic area. Um, I took my dog there, I live off of Courtside and I took my dog there today. And um, yeah, I mean, if you need a little cover, if like my 70 year old mother is doing that or somebody else is doing that and it starts raining, they have a place to go and you know wait out the rain. Uh, but it's, it's also very pretty. I mean, like the rain gutter system you know, flows into this um, uh, rock uh, retention area. So it keeps the water from, you know, making mud and like uh, uh, spreading out. Uh, it's just a lot of thoughtfulness that went into it, but it's not all public funds. It's also, you know, private funds and private efforts, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the implementation and who pays for it question is certainly on our minds and we'll be getting into that more next year. It's a good point to keep. A couple other comments here, um, liking the fountain and the war memorial area, the natural and modern styles. So that's, you know, one, one sort of execution of using brick, stone, and glass um, in a, a park space. And so we're definitely going to be exploring, integrating that throughout the streetscapes. Um, so it's good to hear positive encouragement on that. Uh, and Susan, interested in more plantings, uh, and I think probably just generally kind of softening up hardscape, um, maybe take that so far as getting rid of some of those parking lots, which is certainly part of the town center plan, uh, making it a more inhabitable place, keeping art pieces. Mm -hmm. There's lots of flexibility in the streetscape too. Let's see any other hands raised? Not that I see, all right. Well, definitely keep that in mind. Um, and, and through, uh, I should also mention this project is on Let's Talk Wilsonville. Uh, there's opportunities to provide other feedback through Let's Talk and Philip and Kim can probably mention that right as we close out here shortly. Uh, finally, to get into streetscape concepts, I wanna whet your appetite just a little bit with some conversations about what streetscapes can do for you. you know, sort of blast through these, um, some of the characteristics you all have, have spoken about valuing in your streets, um, using a variety of materials, uh, street trees, and, and ample seating. Um, we finally got a photo of a street in rain, so we're being a little more authentic to ourselves here. Uh, enlivening a neighborhood, you know, bringing uh, tables and benches out so that restaurants and businesses can spill out onto the sidewalk a little bit. Uh, defining your walking area, but also creating places to, to gather and linger um, and, and allowing the streetscape to really mesh with buildings as well. Lots of glass and window transparency there so that those indoor and outdoor spaces uh, really merge together. 
streets that support many modes of travel. You know, as we mentioned, we're looking at cycle tracks, um, zero car promenades. Um, so sometimes you can do that formally with things like cycle tracks, um, landscape buffers and sidewalks. Sometimes it's a much more shared space. Um, there's opportunities for both of that uh, in Wilsonville. Another look at how a streetscape can unify new and old building design. Uh, you know, that gray building in the background is 100 years old. This white one in the front is brand new. And so how to use simple design features and, and local materials, native plants uh, as a way of bringing some cohesion to a district, um, knowing that you know, as the town center evolves over the coming decades, you'll have old and new buildings, vacant sites, active places, but you want to feel sort of of a whole. Ways to use streets entirely differently, you know, festival streets, temporary closures. Um, we've all seen this all of a sudden in 2020 in the COVID era of streets being turned over to, to restaurants and gathering spaces. Um, and, and, you know, this is a wonderful idea that we hope can be carried forward in, in a lot of communities. Um, some streetscapes take a really kind of signature look. You know, we're here in Truckee, California with that old West Town vibe. You may not want to take it this far, but it's kind of acknowledging and embracing uh, some of the heritage of your community. And, and Colin will speak a little bit more about that in the design concepts. Uh, but you are very much in, in a unique and distinct place here. And that's one way to think about streetscape opportunities. I think perhaps most importantly, having a streetscape that's unified and flexible. Uh, this is Alpine Avenue in McMinnville. Um, you know, obviously a very bespoke design that's designed down to the, the square inch, um, but, but really serves a whole lot of different users. Um, and, and is really flexible for people, festivals, businesses, and industries uh, to all take advantage of a space. So those are characteristics we want to bring forward to, to Wilsonville. And just to think about some of the transformation opportunities, you know, how uh, fairly bland anonymous streets like this one in Albany, Oregon, with a little bit of love uh, can become really pretty remarkable places. Uh, and to take away a lot of that asphalt to put in stormwater and benches, lights, uh, trees and bike racks uh, to make them much more human and much more welcoming, I think is a, a, something we really aspire to here. Uh, same thing, a, a similar example up in Winslow Way uh, on Bainbridge Island in Washington. So, you know, we're, you're almost getting to a street that is um, sort of really bicycle and pedestrian first, where, where cars are guests in many ways because of such lushness to the landscaping. Uh, we show you those just to ask, you know, are there any examples from those past photos um, that you sort of are drawn to or, or, or think that we should keep in mind as we design uh, for the Wilsonville streetscape? Were there any material characteristics or even just the ways you saw people using those streets that you found really appealing? Feel free to leave comments or raise your hand. And then I'll note that we do have a couple of other comments that were added after our last break um, about, I think, material choices. So it really ties into this question well. Yeah, these are some good points, Zach. I don't know if you want to speak to these or I, I can read them aloud a little bit. Um, and we're definitely taking these comments for our permanent record, so they'll be noted, uh, but points about curb cuts and being sensitive about where driveways sort of interact with the street. Um, acoustic factors in addition to visual and touch, that's of course very important. Um, the blend of hardscape and softscape. Let's see comments about the brick hierarchy in the Memorial Park. And Catalina with the thumbs up for the native and local materials. All right. 
Uh, well, we're sort of in our closing minutes now, and I, I know I promised you some actual design concepts. <laughs> I'm going to keep marching forward here just a little bit. Um, just to quickly remind you that you know we're starting at the concept level, and in the coming months are, are winnowing this down to different actual locations. Um, you know, perhaps up to eight different street designs and maybe three different um, unique locations, like that former cul-de-sac that Colin mentioned. So that'll be sort of the execution that if you come back and join us in forum number two, uh, you'll see a lot more of that, that lushness um, and, and execution in the designs. But I'm going to hand it off to Colin to kind of close out with where we are in the design exploration right now. Yeah, so first and very foremost, um, this is the very, very, very preliminary, preliminary stages of design. Nothing has been decided. Um, at this point, we're thinking about simply how to organize streetscape elements um, along a right of way, um, how different uses exist spatially and experientially along a street. Um, and to help guide this thinking and design, we started to develop a few themes um, to help tell a story and inform design decisions as we go along. And the three that we came up with were um, agriculture, technology, and river. And again, we're not choosing just one of these themes and running with it. Um, the final concept is most likely gonna be a combination of all three, looking at elements that we like um, and, and the community likes from all three. So. Uh, with that in mind, I think I'll go through each one really quickly. Um, first one was uh, agricultural legacy. And when I think of um, an agricultural legacy or agriculture as a theme, as an organizing theme, we're talking about structured, um, purposeful design um, that it's spatially, we're talking about a uniform sequence of events, right? Like uniform, we're thinking of, think row crops and um, um, produce bin, like produce boxes, uh, hay bales, you know, evenly spread throughout a field. Like those kinds of themes are, are coming into play and we take those themes and then we apply those to a streetscape. So all these diagrams are gonna, they're um, ambiguous in nature. Um, you know, what is the light gray? What is the dark gray? We don't know yet. It's just a, it's initial thoughts in a diagram, very basic. Um, and so as we start to think about what those elements look like, um, what a design palette for an agricultural legacy could look like. Um, this is, an, again, initial thoughts of kind of what we're talking about. We're talking about organized uh, top right, organized gathering spaces, right? Very formal, very organized, very uh, grid oriented. Um, again, with the, the uh, street trees, um, these aren't in grade. These are in planters along the street um, that kind of represent, bring in those agricultural materials of wood um, but simple, purposeful. Um, same with the, the street design elements, the lights and the benches, using materials, um, steels, woods, stone, um, that kind of owed to that agricultural history and legacy. Um, the second one would be the, the uh, what we're calling technological in innovation. Um, when we think of that, we're thinking about well, the first thing that came to my mind was a circuit board. And well, that might sound weird when talking about streets, but if you think about it, when you're starting to define spaces, we're really thinking about blurring the lines between gathering spaces and mode of spaces. So uh, where agricultural, the, the agricultural theme might have a very defined gathering space, this space in, in, the, in the tech theme, if you will, um, might be a gathering space one day. It could be a place for street carts the next. It could be a, uh, a I don't know, a, uh, uh, oh, like a like an outdoor game area, like with um, you know those like life size chess pieces, whatever. Those are just examples. It point is that it's it's less programmed, more modularity, pieces move, those kinds of themes. Um, again, thinking about what that might look physically on um, that top left image. Um, you know, you have these, this nice contrast between landscape, hardscape, um, patterns start to emerge um, and are at the forefront of design. That bottom left image is um, an example of a seating area, which it might be public art, it might be a seating area. It just depends on how it's functioning at the moment. 
um, and also bringing in literal technology into the streets um, with the emergence of electric vehicles and charging stations, um, also personal charging stations for phones and, and um, um, other electronic devices. Um, and then that bottom right image is another example of it, it, if just unprogrammed spaces, but contrast those themes of contrast, those themes of um, modularity, um, spaces are less defined on purpose. And the last concept, which was a river or um, organic flows, we were talk, um, thinking about uh, defining spaces at, uh, along streetscapes as like a series of flows and eddies, right? Like a river moves. Um, and how we define those spaces, you could be talking about landscape beds, you could be talking about hardscape and softscape and how they work together, but um, more defined, but in a, in a natural, I guess, organic way. Um, and what does that look like? Again, we're talking about um, maybe that means that the, if there's a cycle track where we have a chicane or, or a movement to signify um, crossings, right? Like you're, you're coming up to a street, um, better slow down. Um, again, a water element, top right image. We're talking about bringing in natural elements into the streetscape. Um, we've talked already about water elements and um, what that might look like. Again, seating areas as these kind of eddies or, or gathering spaces along a flow of, uh, flowing path or organic shape path. Um, yeah. Again, initial ideas and, and thoughts, getting our, what's in our brain down on paper. <laughs> and so that's just, uh, as Colin mentions, very early thinking. I'm seeing some good comments come in on the chat here. Um, and we just want to ask, you know, do you think these themes are, are consistent with the community's vision and goals? Uh, for the future of the town center and, and your own personal interest in, in, in the town center in the future. Uh, if anyone has anything they want to speak out loud, or I'll definitely keep an eye on the chat. At the very bottom, we're getting some love for the river organic theme. Um, Zach, you ask about Oh, with the geometries also be applied to lot shapes. So streets, alleys, storefronts, or meander. Hmm. It's a really good question. Um, hard to say, you know, I think a lot of lots are probably already platted out, but there's definitely opportunities for uh, those areas in the front setbacks of buildings um, to really blend into the streetscape and to really play with, you know, does a building come right to the property line or is there sort of flexible room there to mesh things together? Uh, definitely something we'll think about. Um, reducing light pollution, a uh, comment from Ben there, another comment from Zach about sort of a modern interpretation of the Western agriculture theme versus more holistic um, subsistence and ag living. So, okay, something to chew on. Um, Susan also with a thumbs up for the river concept. So maybe a, a few of you really like the, the fluidity, not as much um, use of right angles, keep things a little more fluid, you know, certainly, uh, a lot of the streets in the town center right now are curvilinear um, and then we're looking at ways to kind of permeate that with a grid so some geometry to work off of there so we are uh, in overtime and I, I know we started a few minutes late so i will definitely stick on as long as people like but if you have to run off to your to your normal tuesday life um, please do so, and, and we thank you for your participation today. Um, as we mentioned, there will be another forum in early 2021. Um, Philip and Kim will make sure that you hear about it the same way you heard about this one through uh, email blasts and, and notices um, that the city provides. Um, and we, we'd hope to have you know even more robust conversation with you all then. Um, that is sort of essentially where we are in the project right now. Um, 
you know, we really, really appreciate and value the input you've, you've brought in the last hour. Um, to answer that most recent question on the specific email list, if you do go to letstalkwilsonville.com, we have a page up for the streetscape plan and you can at the very bottom, there's a follow project link so you can subscribe to um, any project updates that we make on the page and I do update the page um, to keep in line with where we are on the project. And for everyone who is still with us, um, there's also an additional question on Let's Talk Wilsonville right now that you can um, respond to, which is, are there streetscape designs in other places that you like and want us to consider? And you can add as much text describing why you like that project in there. And you can also upload pictures if you've taken a trip somewhere in a particular public space or street struck a cord with you and you enjoyed it, it would be, and you have a picture or you can Google one to attach it so we know exactly what you mean. You can, you're more than welcome to add additional thoughts there um, as they come up. Um, and that is um, all I have to add for what we've got on Let's Talk right now. And I'll just note that the email list as well, um, if you have participated in any of the other recent activities like the pedestrian bridge project, uh, we do have a list um, that we, it, it's really more of a kind of a catch-all town center because there's a lot of overlap between a lot of these projects. So if you sign up for the list, you'll also, you'll, you'll get updates on this project, but also you can stay informed on other things we've got going on. Um, but the Ped Bridge project, which we mentioned, and as well, I'll put a plug in for the urban forest management plan uh, that has been underway. And there's going to be an open house for that, I believe on the 17th as well online. Uh, the town center is one of the focus areas as it pertains to trees. And they're gonna be doing some work on looking at existing trees as well as making recommendations for trees in the future. So that really feeds into this project here because there, you know, one of the things in the streetscape that we take a lot of pride in in the city is our street trees and that urban forest and that canopy we create. And so, um, you know, we hope that if you if you're really interested in this project, that you'll you'll get interest, you'll get involved and provide some feedback on that project as well. And there's also a page for that one on Let's Talk Wilsonville. So that's really kind of the hub for everything. There. You can do a different project every day of the week. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah. All right, well, as I mentioned, um, Philip and Kim and I will stick around and we'll make sure we're the last folks to hang up. Um, we, we thank you all for spending your lunch hour with us and uh, hope you can enjoy the, the last little bits of gray sunshine before a very rainy week coming up here. All right, thanks for your thank time, you. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If any of us have any additional questions, are we able to bring them up or talk about them now? Sure. Yeah, we're here. So I noticed in the plan that there's a distinction between the main street district zoning and the mixed use zoning. Not to get in the weeds, but what, what do you envision being the important differences between those two overlays? That's a really good question. Um, so yeah, without getting into the weeds, um, the Main Street really, uh, that was called out as a specific district because, you know, we heard when we went through the town center planning process, we heard a lot of feedback about, um, you know, wanting to have that, that connected sense of community um, and particularly, uh, you know, having an opportunity for local small businesses, which we have several of in the town center, um, to be able to continue to thrive and, you know, create that environment. Um, and so one thing that, you know, it's, it's hard to conceptualize, but the town center is actually a very large area. And so, you know, if you, you kind of, I think what came of that was really that the, what was identified as the main street was sort of a little more centralized, a little more accessible and really seen as that focus of having um, purely mixed use, like really focus on the activated ground level, you know, that main street is that place. Um, that's not to say that the zoning doesn't allow for mixed uses elsewhere, because it does. Um, but the, the mixed use district is really kind of the where 
we'd like to see the most concerted effort of creating that atmosphere of, you know, active ground floor uses, retail, sidewalk cafes, and the like. Um, you know, it's, it, I think it's difficult to get that same density of activity across a very large um, space. We, it was funny, I was looking at some older documents for Town Center a couple of days ago, and one of them noted that uh, it was a study done in the 80s, but really equated how much of Town Center really is like, would be equivalent to like, I think it's like nine by nine blocks of Portland's downtown. Um, so it is a big area. So the, the really defining characteristic is that um, it's, it's creating that Main Street character in that district. Thank you. And as we um, get into the streetscape refinements, you know, later on, I mentioned those um, eight different typologies we'll get into. We're certainly going to be taking that urban context and, and private um, side of the property line sort of development character uh, really to heart as we think about um, tailoring the streetscape concepts, you know, to that context. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, thank you all for holding this. Our hey, pleasure. Thank you. Thank you Bye. Bye. L. Lovos. Hello. All right. Not sure if El Lobos is still with us or not. All right. Um, all right. Well, that was, what do we have? 18, 20 people or so? Uh, yeah. yeah, I wrote down, uh, at one point I had seen 15. We did have a few staff in attendance. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have 10 non staff attendees that I caught at a spot in time. Okay. So granted, I didn't, I had some technical challenges getting in here. <laughs> I'm sorry if I blacklisted yeah. you from Zoom. <laughs> well, and then it had to do with my, my Windows profile. I tried to switch, but the other one I, we hadn't logged into in a while. So yeah. it, it's Windows and it's slow. And then the Zoom client wasn't configured properly. So it, it just took a while. I got on my phone for a bit, but um, made it work. Yeah, so so it's a good reminder. Let's plan on checking in again, like about fifteen minutes early for the second one, 